When I was in engineering school, I thought that the classes I was taking, the books I was reading, everything that I learned in class, the technical stuff, would be the keys to my success. But really, after starting my career, I found that the biggest breakthroughs that I had in my career and in my pay were reading books that were non-technical at all. Today, I'm gonna show you four different books that have really changed the way that I think about not only life, but engineering, about relationships, and about how I do everything. Make sure you stick around to the last book because it's one that's not recommended very often and it's one that I feel had the biggest shift in my engineering career and in my life and I know that it can have the same effect on you. First, I have Atomic Habits. This book came out a couple years ago. It's been recommended often. It really made me understand how the little things that we do make a great impact. So everything that you do every single day, that determines your outcome. So if you're in school right now, you setting every single day means you'll be engineer one day. If you're in your career right now, those little things that you're doing to improve mean that one day you'll be in the upper echelons as a principal engineer, as a manager, director, whatever else your goals are. It's all about building these little systems. One of the ones that really kind of stuck out to me was to habit stack. So for instance, at night, I want to brush my teeth and also floss. I never floss. I'm sure you've been to the dentist. They always tell you, do you floss? Do you floss? And inevitably we all say no, or you floss maybe a day or two before. So I got sick of it finally, and I've got a history of bad teeth. So really I decided, okay, well, there's a few things that I wanna do in my pre-night routine. Before I brush my teeth though, I also like to read a book and stretch a little bit and floss. So now I've kind of combined all these things. I basically get on the ground, I get my floss and I floss my teeth. I might have a book open or maybe just talking to my wife and I'm sitting there stretching and flossing and it's kind of been a trigger for me. Ooh, I feel kind of tight. Let me stretch. Oh, I got a floss as well. So that trigger has made me pick up the habit of flossing. You can do this with many different things in your life. Not only do you not forget, but you create little alerts in your mind that trigger you to want to do the said activity. Another little habit that I've started to employ is that I don't don't want to break my chain of work so here for instance is my chain I've got a little planner that I have on my desk here and I write down every single day in this this case here I wanted to edit a certain video but I didn't want to miss more than two days so you can always miss a day that's okay but try not to miss two in a row so I try to track that with this calendar even though I did miss a few on there but it's a visual reminder to get me back in the groove. You thinking doing something small, whether that is even reading for 10 minutes a day makes no difference, you're wrong. Because if you read for even 10 minutes a day, after a year, you've read for 3,650 hours, which is what, 60 hours? That's a lot. Or you working out or exercising or studying or whatever it is, or working extra on a project to push something through. That all that adds up. Here in this book, it's nicely laid out into how you can build these habits and optimize into really nice systems that work for you. So highly recommend it, whether you're an engineer deep in your career, or if you're a student right now, if you just wanna get more optimized and efficient, this book is a clear winner, Atomic Habits by James Clear. The second book is by an author called Ramit Sethi. So it is, I will teach you to be rich. Ridiculous title, I know. But this guy is a finance guy I've been following for about, I don't know, 10 to 12 years. And he came up in the personal development circles and when I was a young engineer, you know, I wanted to know more about money. And it's something that is never really taught to us in school. You don't learn about money. You might learn about project management and money, but not what you should do. So he's got tons of really good chapters, such as getting out of debt. There are ones in building systems and optimization. You can kind of see where my head's at. I like to optimize and systemize everything I do. Probably if you're watching this video, you have that engineering mind also, and you probably want to do the same thing. So it's got one chapter here, for instance, it's about creating a money flow and automating that. And that has been a godsend because I've realized that by putting these things on autopilot, you can start having your money not only work for you, but you also can start to remove the stress that you have in your life about it all. And so he's got goals here about not only financing, retirement, buying a house, buying a car, all these different things, but really creating a system around all that. I reread this often just to kind of make sure that I'm doing well or I try to track myself and goals. So this one here is a really good money book. So I encourage you to take a look see what you think. Third book is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This one here makes all the rounds on all of the investment channels or self-help books, anybody who's looking into entrepreneurship or anything of that sort. But really, I give this to all of my entry-level engineers, literally every single one. I've probably gifted this to 20 to 30 people now the past couple of years because it holds the key to everything that we do. You'll realize that when you get into your career, it's not about really how much knowledge you know or how technically sound you are, but how do you communicate this to other people? 
That is the goal. And that is the goal of this book. It's not about, uh, it might sound a little sleazy how to influence people. You're not trying to do any black magic voodoo on them, but it really goes into some good psychology into how to handle situations, interpersonal and situations, especially at work, within your own team, within your management, people underneath you, the client, all of these things are discussed here in a way that you start to understand how you can communicate to people. And we've all been there. We probably have somebody that we work with or that's been in our lives that doesn't really understand these principles. And although they might be in a higher position, but they might you know, tell you something to do, but you really don't really want to do it. it. It depends how you ask. It's not really always what you ask, it's how you ask it done. And this has helped me in my career, not only as an engineering manager, but personally with my relationships with, with my wife, my family, my, my children, everybody that I meet. You start to understand how people operate and how they want to be spoken to. And it makes you a better person, I think, overall, you know, just learning these communication skills. So this one here, I cannot recommend this book enough. As mentioned, I've gifted this more than any other book. It is not overrated. This one makes the rounds and mine is heavily highlighted and written in on and, and dog-eared and all this good stuff too. So this one here will help you out in your career. As you progress also, you will most likely enter roles of becoming a technical subject matter expert or even a project lead, project manager, I don't know, director. They require you to have really strong interpersonal skills. And it's something that I cannot preach enough to my junior folks on my team and hopefully uh, to you listening as well. The communication skills that you build as an engineer are priceless. And that's what really separates the people that do well in their career and not. For instance, I would rather hire somebody who's technically sound, maybe not the best ever, but that could communicate properly to me, to the team, and then one that I'd actually want to work with rather than somebody who is the most brilliant engineer or scientist ever who you don't want to be around. There is a difference. You will tolerate that brilliant person, but gosh, you just wish that they would make it a little bit easier for you in your life because really your happiness on the job at the end of the day comes down to who you're working with and how you communicate with them. This book helps out. So this is the one that really stuck out to me and that I will never forget reading. I've gone through it a couple of times and this is why I told you to stay to the end. It's called The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch. So Mr. Pausch was a professor at Carnegie Mellon, a computer science department. He was scheduled to give his last lecture and a lot of professors do before they retire. However, he had terminal cancer. So really giving this book a read, you know, from a man, who knowingly was about to die, it really shapes you, what you think is important in life. And it really stuck with me about how I'd want to live my life. He did some amazing things. He had that, he had that kind of curious mind that I think we all love. You know, why do we tinker? You know, we have the engineering bug. There's an old Dilbert skit about he's got the knack. He's an engineer. You know, this man too had all that. And I think it speaks to all of us uh, as engineers that that's the way that we think. And he was just a very curious cat and just did so many amazing things in his life by being curious, by being good to others and realizing what was important. And it is actually summarized so nicely in this book. If you don't wanna read the book, actually you can watch his last lecture on YouTube. It's called The Last Lecture by Randy Pausch. And uh, it's very heartfelt and something that I think will uh, will stick with you no matter what you do. So which one of these have you read? Let me know in the comments. Which others have you read? I'd love to know which ones have shaped you on your journey. And there'll be some links below if you wanna take a look at these and read them for yourself.